Hello and welcome back to part two of a short little series where we are refurbishing and upgrading my gooseneck enclosed race trailer. So this is a 36 foot trailer, triple axle. Uh, I've used it for a bit and in that time I've kind of compiled a list of things I want to upgrade, a list of things I want to fix. Uh, it's kind of nice to do it that way because you know there's stuff I thought I would want to do to this trailer when I got it that I ended up realizing I didn't need to do and then stuff that I didn't even think of that I'm like oh it'd be really nice to have that. So now that I've used it, come up with that list. We're tackling it one by one. So first thing we did, upgrade to electric jack. So I cut the manual jack system out of here. It was a nuisance, the one was bent, it was a mess. So I put these twin electric jacks in, put a pair of deep cycle batteries in for the jacks, but also to have an onboard electrical system for the trailer so we can use the lights and things like that with the trailer unhooked from the truck. Cause currently we only have interior lights if the truck is hooked up to the trailer. So when it's parked on a long weekend at the track, we can use all that stuff. Um, so as of right now, the jacks are the only thing wired to the batteries. So we've got a lot to do there. We're gonna be completely changing up the trailer wiring because it's been spliced and hacked and the plugs have been drug on the ground. It's, it's a mess, it's an absolute mess. Along with refurbishing some stuff, replacing lights and fixing things up and adding more cool stuff. And there's a lot to do, I could go into it, but you'll see it as we go. So I might as well just get started. So first thing I wanna do is actually the thing that is the least important because if I don't do it now and I run out of time, I won't do it. If I run out of time on something I have to do, then I have to do it, right? Uh, because we are using the trailer in two days this weekend. So we've got a limited time span to get this thing set up and ready to go. And then we're gonna get to try it out and see how all the improvements are. But exterior lights, as you can see, mine are all faded and cracked. And I mean, they all work, but <laughs> they are in dire need of replacement. You can see we need to, Put another bolt in there but yeah they are just absolutely toast this is a good up close representation of it i mean completely just about to crack and fall apart so got a whole box of replacements so let's get started ha ah, we got literally the exact same lights it's perfect oh they're riveted on i got an idea half of these bases i got from e trailer are broken anyway <laughs> Well, that'll make things easy. Yeah, because the bases are all good. It's just the lights that are after. All right, cool. I'm just going to go around and do that. That way we don't have to unrivet the bases and re rivet. Well, here are all the old lights. As you can see, most of them had no color left in them whatsoever. And we're very cracked. So I'm glad we got those replaced. It's the little things, man. The new ones look so much nicer. Actually, Amber <laughs> got them all replaced. This one was the one that was missing entirely. I couldn't find the wire. I even stuck a little camera bore scope down in there trying to find it. Used a pick. I, I couldn't find the wire. So I'll have to run a new wire to that one. Very satisfying little project. Put the lights on for you before I move the truck back over. And they all work. So that's all that matters. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, now we're moving on to the more important stuff. Like I said, wanted to get this out of the way, otherwise it might not get done. For wiring, I've got this 10 foot cable that goes into this junction box. So I did this on my open trailer. I really like this setup. Uh, it's just really easy to deal with. If you have any issues, it's really easy to diagnose. Uh, so anyway, wiring comes in here, boom, goes to seven different posts, and then we just wire to each post. So you can easily stack multiple things on one if you're wiring you know, multiple different lights off the one uh, running light circuit or whatever. So anyway, I like this setup. We need to mount it. Well, figure out where we need to mount it, mount it, and then that'll kind of dictate the rest of our wiring because we're gonna be running, wiring to and from it. We also need to mount this kill switch. So I'm gonna set this up in the locked cabinet. That way I can turn my batteries on or off, kill the ground to them, kill the power, then someone can't come up and just jack my trailer up with the uh, switches and also keep us from draining the batteries out unnecessarily. Let's get to it. So I need to figure out if I wanna mount the box here where I can get to it easily or up here. I'm leaning towards up here to keep all the wiring in here aside from the main cord going out. So that should be our interior light power. So we're gonna 
keep this breakaway battery box. I've got a new battery for it. We've got a new breakaway switch. Um, well, this right now is being used as a junction box. Now we just have left one wire, two wire. So that's all our trailer wires. These are obviously our jack wires. We need to wound these, peak clamp them, run them. We're gonna have to run the, e the ground of each one that goes to the battery through the battery kill switch. So that way when we kill the battery power, the, the switches aren't operable because they're wired straight to the battery. They're not wired through like the trailer harness. Okay, we need to mount this. Gotta drill some pilot holes for our self tappers. box is mounted. Our wires will reach. All right, so I got the old wiring pulled out of here. This is our breakaway switch wiring. The last thing we need to do before we start wiring stuff up is mount our kill switch for the batteries slash the trailer jacks. So I want to mount it right on this, like right about here. Um, so we'll need to build a little standoff bracket and a bracket that it bolts to. Boom, put it right there. We do also have a solar charger coming today or tomorrow. We're gonna put on as well, but you know, if you're gonna let something sit for a while, if you leave the battery hooked up, it will kill it, guaranteed. So maybe we won't need to with the solar charger, uh, I don't know, but I wanna at least have it, have the option. Okay, let's start making a bracket. Well, there wasn't like in the extension cord, but it worked. All right, sweet, super solid. So there's our kill switch. Now we can actually wire everything up. to start looming stuff up. I'm gonna run my main ground wires. I guess my main powers too. Get that wrapped up. We got the jack wiring all done. Let me show you. So I loomed them from the switch back. They come down, this one's looped around uh, because it's extra long because that jack's closer, but I wanted to keep the length in case we need to mess with it one day. Then boom, comes over here, P-clamp there, comes in here, ground's going there. This is the other jack, goes into the ground switch, which is here carries on to the other jack, and then the grounds come down to each battery. I cloth taped it all. Uh, it looks really nice. I'm really happy with it. So yeah, now we just gotta do our power wires to the battery. And I've got some stuff I wanna add on, but as far as the main wiring, that'll be it. So let me get those wires done. We gotta run them from up there, same route down here, and then see how it all works. Wow. 
lot out of this terminal post. Does it work? Yeah. All right, boys, here it is. All done. Well, done for now. <laughs> so here's what we've got. We've got two sets of ground wires coming into each battery and the battery's tied together. That way when we do our solar charger, we only have to hook up to one. This will carry the current to the other. We got our kill switch on the ground side. So we got our grounds, two grounds from up there, from the fuse box, one from each jack and and essentially the same thing out just to make sure we get enough current through. The reason I did the kill switch on the ground is just that way you have less power wires excessively running everywhere and open connections and stuff. You can do it on the ground, it's the same thing. If the ground's disconnected to the battery, the battery is useless, as long as you have all of them going through it. But yeah, I really like this uh, cloth tape for a loom. It works out really well, it looks really clean. So I've got everything done. We've got our grounds and powers going up here into our box. And then I've got one extra power coming out here because we're going to use this for uh, some lights in here and in the front over the tongue area. So I went ahead and got this out so we don't have to go in there and take those nuts on and off too many times. So yeah, let's see if uh, Jack's work number one. That's step one. You guys probably can't see anything. Yeah, Jack's working. All right. Let's see if the interior lights work. Dun, dun, dun. No. Well, problem number one, interior lights don't work. All right, so I figured it out. <laughs> so when I was looking at wiring this, I was like, oh yeah, this goes into the inside and is our auxiliary power. I just assumed that because the rest of the wiring goes out in a loom together, which you would presume runs back to the rest of the trailer because it has to go back to the lights. So I assumed the brake wiring is in that. I was wrong. This is the trailer brake wiring. The black wire in this loom is our 12 volt auxiliary wire. So fix that. Problem solved. We now have lights. Oh, it's so exciting to have lights in this thing without it hooked up. We got no truck, boys. We got no truck there. We got lights. So sick, so sick. I need to change the light bulbs and the lights, the other lights that I left. I wanna add some more lighting in here, but I mean, this is really a, a pretty good amount for a trailer. Like, yeah, it'd be nice to have more lighting, but the hell is a cockroach? A flying cockroach? What the hell? What is that thing? He's going out. He's leaving. No, to the right, bud. No, to the right. The other way, dude. Other way. This way. Go that. No, go that way. Okay, anyway. <laughs> uh, it's plenty of light, especially over here because I've got him doubled up. Dude, this thing's taunting me now. It's taunting me. Since I've got him doubled up, if you're working on the workbench, probably ch turn my headlight off. You got plenty of light, which is really nice. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting distracted. It's time to pull the truck over here, hook it up, and make sure everything works from the truck side of things. Sorry, you guys didn't even, couldn't even see it yet. We got lights, boys. You can also see the new lights at night. All the lights. Oh, it's gonna glitch on me. All the lights. I wanna see this one. Yeah, see, that one's a little dim still. So many lights. Make sure the trailer brake controller showing connected. Yep, that's good. And then, turn signals. Uh, we need to check individual ones too. Make sure the colors aren't backwards on this trailer. Yep. All right, I'm gonna check individual, but you guys get the idea. 
Seems like everything's working. I love seeing the whole rig all lit up. It just looks so cool. Obviously it's late, but man, am I excited to have working lights and stuff. There's so much more we can do now that we have an onboard battery system uh, that we couldn't do before. So I'm really excited for it. I know it's the little things, but it feels good making this trailer my own and making it what I want it to be. Instead of just running it how it is, like, I don't know. I always enjoy doing stuff like this, making anything my own and, and suiting it to what I want and need. So anyway, enough jibber jabbering, it's late. See you guys in the morning, we'll get back to work. Went ahead and added a couple of fuse holders with fuses obviously to our power wires and that is done. We got a fuse for each jack, fuse for each of these two power wires, everything fused. I want to work on our lighting. So I guess let's get the lights up first and then we'll figure out how we want to wire them. So here are the lights we've got. I like these. Uh, you can get, these are basically what we have in the shop here. Uh, those are the same thing, just longer, uh, but they're cool. They have these little, come on bud, there we go. They have these little brackets and you just screw these on and then the lights pop into them and they're super light. I mean, they weigh nothing. You can just drop them on the ground. Uh, no, but they're, they're really, really light. So like you can screw this into pretty much anything. You could screw it into like drywall and the lights aren't gonna fall down. So these are pretty cool. They've got a little switch right here. So like I said, I wanna put, I mean, I bought four. I was gonna put two inside in the tongue area where the tires are, but I was thinking of putting two in here that way when I'm working in here, doing anything, whatever, I can see and then put one on each side up here. Um, so that way I have light at night if I'm hooking up the trailer or something. There we go. Sweet. Lights are hung, wire them up. All right, I haven't been able to film much, but here we go. Wire power in, comes through here. I've got an extra ground wire there if I need it. Then we go that way, boom. I use these really cool, I got them off McMaster car. It's like a zip tie with a hole. So you zip tie the wire and then just screw it in. It's a great way to do this so you're not wasting P-clamps on a couple of wires. But anyway, comes up to this light over, and this light over, I've got an extra power wire here. I need to heat shrink the end of it. But basically, this is just in case I wanna add anything else to this. And then it comes this way over here. I'm gonna clamp it one more time here. And then I'm gonna put a switch on this panel. It'll be switched ground. So I'll have them, they have their own switches, but that way so I don't have to go turn each one on. I'll have them all on. And then when I switch the ground, boom, they should all come on. I need to go get a switch though, because I don't have it. I thought I had at least one janky little toggle switch. I don't have any. I was surprised by that. Well, we're making good progress, but the old Florida rainstorm every afternoon in the summer thing is kind of putting a halt on things. I was under there, but then it started misting like this. Ah, the wonders of living in Florida. You have to plan that it'll rain for two hours every day, not just light rain. Oh, you see that? Thunder's coming. Uh, rain like this, it's been raining for like five minutes. Oh. Well, oh, we'll get back to you guys when I can actually get back to work. Almost done with the light install. All right, got all the wiring done. You can see it comes across there. Go up through here to our switch. Now our switch is grounded here. Turn the switch on, boom. We got lights, lights, and more lights. So that'll be really nice because we are gonna be adding some more stuff in here, which we'll talk about later. And so it'll be nice to be able to flick the switch and 
see what we're doing. So super happy with that. That worked out really well. I still have this one too. I've got an extra ground as well. So I could hook something up powered off the same switch circuit setup if I wanted to. If I wanted to add another white or, or something small, you know, I could just boom, boom, add it in. We need to P-clamp our uh, main power cable. That is important. If you ever have to self tapper through something thick, pre drill, you're hopeless. It's kind of tricky to find the right size bit. Not too big to where the self tapper doesn't grab anything, but not so small that it has to drill and then you break it. Our cable's not dang one from a mile away. I'm using it, tuck it up here. I think I'm gonna just re redo this wiring too for the breakaway switch, but slight problem. The breakaway switch is held in with that same freaking fastener I don't have the tool for. It'll be here tomorrow, but we need to use the trailer tomorrow. So I'm gonna tidy it up for now. We'll have to do that tomorrow morning before we head to the track. So that pretty much wraps us up on part two's projects, but we still gotta use it. We gotta try it out. So that's what we're gonna do. We've got an event tomorrow. Gotta get the LS Miata off the lift, finish up a bunch of little things on it, mountain tires, etc. getting it ready. It's ready to go. So we need to get the truck hooked up to the trailer, car loaded up. Then we're gonna head to the track and see how the trailer is in practice. Get the car loaded in. My tires up here, ready to go. Hopefully the LS Miata is ready to go, it should be. Unless any new problems arise. I also got a solar panel kit to keep the batteries charged, charge them while we're out of vents, etc. Uh, but it just came in. We're already done for the day, so I'll get that thrown on there um, once we get back from the event this weekend and already showered. I don't feel like getting super sweaty again, but we do need to go strap the batteries down. So my plan was to make them out for the batteries, uh, but it slipped my mind with all the wiring. so. We'll strap them down and then we'll make that bracket when we're putting the generator in and doing the rest of this stuff. But for now, strap will work. Strapped, good to go. Oh, well, here she is all loaded up, new lights, whole electrical system figured out. I'm super excited, man. I'm really happy with all those little improvements. Let me make sure I didn't leave this light on. No. We'll have to come check out some of the light stuff at night. I am probably gonna need to extend this I took one P clamp off and it's so close, but if I if I'm jackknife it to the right, uh, it seems like it's it's not gonna reach. So that's pretty lame. <laughs> I got the longest one I could find with the junction box. So uh, anyway, 
enough jibber jabbering. Let's uh, take a look at these lights at night, and tomorrow we're gonna hit the road and see how the trailer does with all the new improvements. All right, let's see what these lights look like at night. Where's the switch? Holy cow! That is amazing. Oh man, that is gonna make hooking and unhooking at night so nice. I don't have the key for this on me, but dude, you can see everything in there. Oh, that's so sick. Diagnosing any sort of wiring issue, fixing anything, checking things. Boom, can see it all. I wonder what it looks like from back here. Looks like I got underglow on my trailer, you know, just stunting. <laughs> Sweet, I'm really glad we did that. That made a big difference. That'll be really, really nice at night. It is night, I get it. All right, boys, time to hit the road. We got Ben back there, truck, open trailer. We got the rig, ready to roll. Let's see how this goes. We made it. We're here. All right, I didn't really film anything on the drive. This is a tight squeeze. Be right back. We made it, then just a spare. No issues, I did have to change a trailer tire right before we left. I, I don't know if like, I ran over one of the self-tappers I was using or what, uh, but I came out today to get ready to head out and it was uh, flat. So, put a spare on, uh, we're good there. Pulling into the track now, see how this thing is in use. Oh, is that Ethan behind us? It's kind of funny. All rolling in at the same time from different directions. We got the old Fummins warming up. Everything's loaded up inside the trailer. So, so happy with, with having the enclosed, man. I gotta say, this thing has been so, it's such a nice uh, upgrade to have here. Uh, especially the lights, like the last time I used it, the lights weren't working and the time before that. And, you know, I don't know, just fixing all the little things. And honestly, having gone back to an open trailer for a while while we were building the Fummins and then coming back to the enclosed, I appreciate it way more than I did the first time. The first time I was, always having truck trouble and I was like, this isn't worth it. I'm just gonna get a gas truck and an open trailer. But now that I have a truck that I'm happy with and that I like, I don't know. I, it just, I'm allowing myself to appreciate it more. And it is so nice, dude. So nice having everything at an arm length. All my gas cans there, boom, boom. I uh, just tossed the top back on my Miata. I took it off when we were drifting. It's just like set on there with like one little strap. Like don't have to worry about it flying off, going down the road, having all my spare parts and everything organized. <sighs> It's so nice, it's just so nice. But anyway, it's time to hit the road, time to head home. All right, well, the rig made it back home in one piece, not a single issue. I love, having the Fummins is so nice. This thing pulls this trailer so well. One thing I did notice too, with redoing the wiring, the trailer brakes work and really everything works so much better than it did before. The old plug was so destroyed that it, it just wasn't making good connection. And now we have full power connection to our trailer brakes, night and day difference. This thing stops on a freaking dime now. Sandy even agrees, right Sands? Yeah, okay, thank you. I was, I was just checking. You know, you're the supervisor here. You know better than anyone about this thing. Uh, so anyway, uh, still more to do. I, I've got some, some ideas, some things I want to do, some ideas from comments on the other videos. We do have the solar charger to go up there on the tongue portion. I want to add a generator. I have this old one, uh, but it's one of those super noisy ones. You got to like pull it out and start it. And I've never used it because it's such a nuisance. I was going to put one under the cabinet like a mid-sized quiet one, but I can fit a small quiet one in here and that should maybe barely run an AC unit. If I could do that, that would be by far the way to go. Keep it outside of the trailer, uh, nice and tucked away and hidden in a locked cabinet. That would free up space here for cabinet or steps that would keep the room we have right now under the cabinet there. I think that would be the way to go. I have an AC unit as well. Came with the trailer, it's an older one. I don't know if it works or not. So I wanna try that off. We can get that working, get it on, get the generator on, have AC, like that would be that would be sick. So we're gonna be doing that. Um, and then also aesthetic stuff that we still gotta do. So we're either gonna wrap the trailer black or try to bring back this white. I would like to try to bring back this white if I could, just, just for fun, even if we still wrap it black. So if you have any methods on how to, how to get the white back on this trailer, uh, leave them in the comments below. And I'll try all of them that seem like they would work and we'll see if we can bring it back or not. That'd be kind of fun. It'd, it'd be a fun little project. So Sandy said she's down to help, right Sands? Yeah, all right, cool. You can pressure wash, I'll scrub, you know? Be a fun little project, right? But anyway, uh, really, really happy with all the progress on the trailer. Excited to do more. I'm sure we'll come up with more after that, but one of those things, just ticking off the boxes one thing at a time. So 
I'm gonna go park this thing and then that's gonna be it for this one guys. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, goodbye.